The Lord said, I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice, and in the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being my priests. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and unfathomable his ways! I saw every work of God. I concluded that man cannot discover the work which has been done under the sun. Even though man should seek laboriously, he will not discover. And though the wise man should say, I know, he cannot discover. For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For there is one God, and one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us out of this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forevermore. Amen. Jesus gave himself for our sins, according to the will of our God and Father. For Jesus himself said, I have not come down from heaven to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Again, in another verse, he said, For I am not seeking to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And he said, This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Eternal life is in the knowledge of the true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, so that we might live through him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. And even as thou gave him authority over all mankind, that to all whom thou hast given him, he may give eternal life. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells on Mount Zion. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. And we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you, and have charge over you in the Lord, and give you instruction, that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work, live in peace with one another. And we urge you, brethren, Admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all men. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all men. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And by his doing you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification, and redemption. It is through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. And in the same way the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. 
For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. You must worship in spirit and truth. And Jesus said, Thy word is truth. And he says in another verse, When he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness of me, and you will bear witness also, because you have been with me from the beginning. He shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine and shall disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. No man has seen God at any time. For God said to Moses, No man can see me and live. And the only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Indeed, the Father has testified concerning his Son, not himself. He who doesn't believe that testimony has made God a liar. God declared him when a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain thee, how much less this house I have built. The Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands, says the prophet. Heaven is my throne, he says, and the earth is the footstool of my feet. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what place is there for my rest? Was it not my hand which made all these things? He made from one every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist, as even some of our own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Being then the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and thought of man. And the Lord said, To whom then will you liken me, that I should be his equal? And again he says, To whom would you liken me? and make me equal, and compare me, that we should be alike. Any graven images, any paintings, artwork, anything drawn by the imagination of man to compare God is nothing more than an idol and an abomination. God's glory cannot be compared to anything that we could possibly imagine. Those who lavish gold from the purse and weigh silver on the scale Hire a goldsmith, and he makes it into a god. They bow down, indeed they worship it. They lift it upon their shoulder and carry it. They set it in its place, and it stands there. It does not move from its place. Though one may cry to it, it cannot answer. It cannot deliver him from his distress. This is describing your crucifix, with the image of the man Jesus Christ on it. It's an idol, folks. The Lord said to Moses, I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but my name, Lord, I did not make myself known to them. As it's written, The Lord said to my Lord, Stand at my right hand until I make thine enemies your footstool. The Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They are two separate 
individuals. The Lord said to my Lord, Stand at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. Who sings the new song? Is it not the 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth? The Lord said to Moses, You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not make for yourselves idols, nor shall you set up for yourselves an image or a sacred pillar, nor shall you place a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that men may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other, the one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity. I am the Lord who does all these. Bring out the people who are blind, even though they have eyes, and the deaf, even though they have ears. All the nations have gathered together in order that the peoples may be assembled. Indeed, we have the Internet, who among them can declare this and proclaim to us the former things? Let them present their witnesses, that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say, It is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, Jesus Christ, in order that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed, and there will be none after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and there is no Savior besides me. For God sent His Son to be the Savior of the world, the sacrifice. It is God who saved by sending Jesus Christ. Again Jesus said, I have not come down from heaven to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. It is I who have declared and saved and proclaimed. And there was no strange God among you. So you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and I am God. Even from eternity I am He, and there is none who can deliver out of my hand. I act, and who can reverse it? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is He who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me? And where is a place that I may rest? For my hand made all these things. Thus all these things came into being, declares the Lord. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble, and contrite of spirit, and who trembles at my word. It is God who gives life to the dead, and calls into being that which does not exist. Now to him who is able to exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. For we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were entreating through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. By this love, 
the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has beheld God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy, and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. From Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. And he has made us to be a kingdom priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.